We circle today on the calendar for Imanaga JP. It's also the exchange deadline, an important day on the calendar, on the baseball calendar. Tell me why. Good morning. Good morning, Lauren. I have once again arrived in the standard hot stove uniform of the quarter zip <laughs> with the collared shirt underneath. Right, this is, right. as we all know, the sweater show on MLB Network. And yes, an important day here on these cold days of January, the arbitration exchange deadline, 8 p.m. Eastern time this evening. It's going to be a very busy day for front offices, for agents, because this is a deadline to decide what number you are going to file at that you believe you can defend in front of an arbitrator. Now, this is for that reason, sometimes you see a lot of teams and agents settle at the midpoint of what they think that number is going to be, or there are some teams that we know as the file and trial team for whom if you do not get a deal done by today, you are going to the hearing room. So a very important, if somewhat under the radar day in the course of the off season. So we ask, who is eligible Tell me. for salary arbitration? Well, Lauren, there's some pretty big time names on this board right now. Vlad Guerrero Jr., Juan Soto. That's going to be a huge number in his final year before free agency. Notably, screen, Tucker and Valdez. Yes, Harold, we have the full screen built. Tucker and Valdez do not yet have their long-term deals with the Astros. We've heard a lot about Willie Adamas and Corbin Burns potentially being trade candidates this winter time. Shane Bieber, another trade candidate. Zach Gallen, he's been a star pitcher in the National League. And the aforementioned Pete Alonso. Now, right about now, we're going to listen for a moment to David Stearns, the new president of baseball operations of the Mets. He spoke with our colleagues John Heyman and Joel Sherman about the future of Pete Alonzo. He's a really good player. Um, we like really good players. Uh, we also understand that as players approach free agency, um, that, that there's often a desire to test free agency. It's really tough to line up on these types of deals in the last year of a player's team control in the last year of arbitration. I can't predict the future, um, but I'm pretty darn confident he's going to be our first baseman on opening day, and I'm looking forward to that. That's a pretty important update, Lauren, all the way around. I, I thought the, the one thing that stood out to me was that he said it's tough. It's tough to line up on value for a player entering his final year before free agency. That, to me, says, if you're a Matt fan, set your expectations low for an agreement before spring training. That's what that says to me, that, that more than likely with all those power numbers that Ron and Maddie alluded to in, in, in the beginning of the show, for all those reasons, it's hard to line up and say, yes, we believe that your long-term value is this and that we're gonna be able to find an agreement. Notably, on the other side of town, Aaron Judge and the Yankees were at the very same spot before his historic season. Then, of course, we know that Aaron Judge returned to the Yankees and signed back with them after he put up those 62 home runs. So I think Met fans should be realistic about the chances of, of and the low chances, I'm saying, of an agreement before opening day of 2024, but also realize that if things go the right way this season, he could very easily return to Queens the way that Aaron Judge did to the Bronx uh, just a couple Decembers ago. So I think very important context there. Notably, he was also asked by John Heyman about how do you look at the deadline? And, and David basically said that's a long time from now. You can't really tell how the deadline's going to play out. But I do think this, if if the Mets are pessimistic about their chances of signing him long term, and if they're a good distance away from the trade from winning the division and making the playoffs, I do think, Lauren, on a lot of MLB Central shows in June and July, we'll be talking about mm -hmm. Pete Alonso. Oh, I'll be asking you that question. We spoke with David Stearns in Nashville, and he says Pete has and will continue to be a great Met. And we were thinking, should we read with, between the lines? But I guess time will tell. You know what I was thinking today? January 11th, and so many guys haven't found homes. I mean, I feel like I thought Matt Chapman would have already been off the board. Who's in right now on him? Yes, the great question. And again, John Heyman reported this uh, a couple days ago that the Cubs are involved as well. We've talked a lot this offseason already about the Giants and the Blue Jays. Of course, the Jays don't really have an everyday third baseman ready to go if Chapman signs elsewhere. And so as a result, coming back to Toronto is, is a valid option, as is 
the Giants because, of course, you've got that connection to Bob Melvin going back many years to the Oakland Athletics. But the Cubs were a bit of a new entrant to that conversation that John Heyman reported on. And, and it makes sense because they still have some work to do offensively. Do they consider Cody Bellinger bringing him back? Uh, but Chapman fits because they have a need now at third base that they really could – Add someone at either corner infield spot. There's a reason why we've talked a lot about the Cubs and Reese Hoskins or the Cubs and Justin Turner. That corner infield conversation for the Cubs, especially now they've wrapped up or they're on the verge of wrapping up the Shota Imanaga deal by 5 p.m. Eastern time today. So time is getting short to send out a press release today about the Imanaga deal. Uh, that is going to be, I think, the next item of business after the Imanaga contract will be corner infield and Chapman part of those conversations yeah he came out of the gate last season on a mission we haven't talked about Jordan Hicks not not enough I don't think I was reading on MLB.com how eye popping velocity has always been his calling card where's the home where's the greatest fit where's the greatest interest JP I'm going to mention a couple of American okay. League perennial contenders here Lauren his hometown Houston Astros and the New York Yankees both of them expect to be in October both of them need some late inning bullpen help. Or recall, one of the more important parts of the Yankees trade for Juan Soto was they gave up a lot of pitching depth. And, and there was the thought that they were going to potentially have King in the rotation or maybe some help in the bullpen. Whatever the reason, they need, I think, one more late inning guy. And, and to me, that the figures that Hicks put up in the second half after that trade uh, with the Blue Jays, they stand out to me. The opposing batting average dropping to 207. The strikeout rate dropped as well, but I think just as importantly that ERA was lower because he was in the strike zone more often. And Hicks's stuff is so good that explosive fastball is so unhittable that you can even take a tick or two lower on velocity. And as long as you're in the zone, it's gonna be tough to square up. And those numbers with the Blue Jays affirm that reality. So for me, Lauren, again, I, I mentioned his hometown Astros. They've been looking for bullpen all off season long. And what a great story that would be for him to go back to the great city of Houston, Texas. A fascinating free agent case. He is an outlier. JP Morosi, appreciate the time. As always, did Thanks I mention I washed my hair for you? <laughs> you and Ron, appreciate, we appreciate that. <laughs> that, I'm two-timing him.